Hi friends, happy Sunday. It is 7.30 and it's time for tonight's Bible bedtime stories. Um, tonight we're reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And we're reading a story that probably a lot of you know. It's about a young man who had a very colorful coat. And the story is titled, The Forgiving Prince. Jacob had 12 sons. But of all of his sons, Joseph was his favorite. And one day Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was beautiful with rich colors, all the colors of the rainbows. But it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich rainbow robes too. And then to make matters worse, Joseph kept having these special dreams. I dreamed that I was the greatest. I was king, Joseph told his brothers, and you all bowed down to me. Now, I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that telling your brothers things like that isn't a very good idea. Joseph's brothers hated him even more, and they wanted to kill Joseph and his dreams. And one day, that's exactly what the did. They tore Joseph's ro rainbow robe off of him and sold him to slave traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him into a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph was dead. That's the end of the dreamer, they thought. But they were wrong. God had a magnificent dream for Joseph's life, and even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, God would use it to help make the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. Meanwhile, though, things were not looking good for Joseph in Egypt. He was far from home and from his dad, and then he got blamed for something that he didn't do, and even though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown in jail. But God had not left Joseph. One night, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a scary dream about thin cows gobbling up fat cows. What on earth did it mean? He didn't know. But Joseph was a dream expert, and so Pharaoh sent for him. It means a famine is coming, Joseph explained. There won't be enough food. Pharaoh was so pleased by Joseph's skill that he immediately took Joseph out of jail and made him a prince. Now back home, Joseph's brothers had run out of food, and everyone was hungry. God's special family was in danger. And if they didn't get some food soon, they might starve to death. So Joseph's brothers traveled to Egypt to buy food. They came and they knelt before the new prince. His brothers didn't know that the prince was Joseph. But Joseph knew who they were. And Joseph's dream, the one about his brothers bowing down to him, it was coming true. It's me, Joseph cried. When they saw it was Joseph, the brothers were afraid. They had wronged Joseph. They had sinned and they knew it. Now Joseph would certainly punish them. But Joseph looked at his brothers and his eyes filled with tears. Even though his brothers had hurt him and hated him and wanted him dead, in spite of everything, he couldn't stop loving them. His heart, which they had broken, filled up with love, and Joseph forgave them. Joseph threw his arms around them. Don't be afraid, he says. Behind what you were doing, underneath everything that happened, 
God was doing something good. God was making everything right again. Joseph didn't punish them. He rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince, a young prince whose heart would break like Joseph. He would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and want him dead. He would be sold for pieces of silver. He would be punished even though he did nothing wrong. But God would use everything that happened to this young prince, even the bad things, to do something good, to forgive the sins of the world. I think that's a story that we've all heard before, and we probably know about Joseph and his brothers, and maybe some of us have even watched um, a movie about him. There's lots of them out there. The story about Joseph reminds us that sometimes bad things happen and sometimes we end up in situations not because we've done anything wrong, but because it seems like everything is against us. And yet God uses those things. He uses those things to make us who we are and he uses those things to set in motion his plans. Joseph was far from home and far from his families. He was in jail, and yet he was able to save so many people because God gave him the wisdom to understand dreams and interpret them. And because of that, he was able to save his family. And as a matter of fact, the whole people, the Israelites that God had chosen. God uses us and he uses the situations that we're in too to do good things. And it might not seem like things are very good right now. But he takes our situations and he takes the place that we are and he uses them. Maybe it's to teach us a lesson. Maybe it's to show us a different way. Maybe it's to get us ready for something that's coming. But he uses everything we experience. Nothing is ever wasted. So this time that we've been at home, spending lots of time with our families, we can use that to help us grow, to show love, to show kindness, to show patience. We can use that time to practice growing in the fruit of the Spirit. God uses everything to make us more and more like Jesus. Tonight, it's just about time to pray and remember I said I had a special thing that's coming tomorrow so make sure you turn in tune in tomorrow night to Bible bedtime stories and tonight it's just about time to pray so you can head off to bed so if you would fold your hands and pray with me dear Jesus thank you for today and for all of the ways that you use what's happening for our good Thank you for the lessons that we learn, for the things that we experience, for the people who come into our life and help us to grow to be more like Jesus. Remind us that every day is a chance for us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you guys have a fantastic night. I will see you tomorrow with another Bible bedtime story. Have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.